for very distant objects, very distant stars, scientists can't use the typical uh, parallax or uh, angular degree measurements to estimate the diameter or radius of distant stars. So instead, they employ a simpler technique. Let's first compare flux and luminosity. Now, any luminous object, such as a star, has both a flux and a luminosity. Now, the flux is simply a measure of how many joules per second, the energy being pumped out every second, or power, for every square meter of the surface area of the object that's producing the energy. That's very different than luminosity, because luminosity is just the total power. How many joules every second is this star producing, releasing, emitting? And so these two clearly aren't the same. This is more like the total, and this is part of the power. Now, of course, we could easily convert flux to luminosity if we knew the surface area. So, flux is calculated according to Stefan's law by using his constant 5.67 times 10 to the negative 8th watts per meter squared per Kelvin to the fourth. And by multiplying that by the temperature in kelvins, you can calculate the flux. Now, the surface area of any spherical object, including a star, is calculated by 4 pi radius squared. Now, if we just want to multiply surface area by flux to get luminosity, that means if this is surface area and that's flux, this becomes luminosity when we have 4 pi r squared t to the fourth. So yeah, you if you knew the luminosity or the radius or the temperature, any two of these three, you could of course find the third because these are essentially constants. And oftentimes it's more convenient uh, to eliminate them altogether by simply adjusting the luminosity and the radius and the temperature of the object proportional to our own star's luminosity, which I would remind you is 3.9 times 10 to the 26 puny little watts of energy. And um, the radius of our star to one digit is seven times 10 to the fifth kilometers. And the temperature emanated from the photosphere of our own sun is 5800 kelvins. So now, how would I employ this information? Well, I could use a much simpler version if I knew, say, the absolute magnitude. And let's say I knew from absolute magnitude that one star was just twice as luminous as our star. We put a 2 in there. And if I examined its black body curve, then I noticed that its temperature was around 30,000 kelvins. I could then say take our temperature, our star's temperature, and calculate the relationship between the two, which would simply be 30,000 divided by 5,800. And we're going to see that about 5.2, 5 5.2 to the fourth times whatever the radius is squared should equal 2. Do a quick calculation. I take 2 and I divide by 5.2 to the fourth and take the square root of everything. And I get a radius. Now remember, this is not the actual radius of 0. 0.0. 5, 2. And what this means is whatever this object is, it's only about 5 one hundredths because, of course, the radius of our star is considered to be 1 using this simplified version of the equation. But yes, uh, it's only about a 20th the radius of our star. So, of course, if I multiply that by the radius of our star, the sun, I'd get the total radius of the object I'm looking at. If I doubled it, I get the total diameter of the object I'm looking at. 
And whatever this object is, it's not all that large. It's only 7.3 times 10 to the fourth kilometers in diameter. Now, we can use this, of course, with any two of the three variables to find the third. So let's say that we knew the radius, or we imagined the radius of some object to be Oh, let's call it a super blue giant, and its radius is a thousand times that of our own sun. And we know the temperature would have to be probably on this photosphere somewhere in the vicinity of 30,000 kelvins. Well, we could find the luminosity of such a beast by simply saying that the radius is 10 to the third times that of our own star and we would square that and we would still have to convert this to comparable temperature units and that would be as easy as taking 30,000 and dividing again by 5800 I should have just used my last one scrolled up and that was 5.2 so yes this is temperature is 5.2 times that of our own sun. And then if we do a quick calculation of 5.2 all raised to the fourth times essentially 10 to the sixth, we get a luminosity that is 7.3 times 10 to the eighth times that of our sun. Because remember, we would be assuming in this equation as being used that we get a one for our sun. So this is 730 million times more luminous than our own star. And it's no wonder that such beasts as blue giants are so visible despite extremely distant positions in our galaxy because of all the massive energy being produced every second.